India had a mean body weight of 170 pounds. 170, 80, I mean, just figure out, it's half of it. Standard deviation is 40 pounds. What does it mean? Plus 70 or minus, plus 170 or minus 170. That is what you mean. So what is your null hypothesis? The mean is 70. What is your alternate hypothesis? It's not 170. And you want to check it out. Simple. Do you get this there? Two days back, I was praying that it shouldn't rain. Because, you know, we had a very huge function. A lot of students had come. I mean, everything was open. Had it been inside Tiger Auditorium, I wouldn't have bothered. If all the appliances, equipment, they were all exposed to rain. Yesterday, I went out to the room there. I was for a big surprise. Very big drizzle. And I sat in the education college. And we did a seminar beside the step well in the open. And uh, VC, registrar, and the chief guest, everybody spoke when it was drizzling. By the time I came out, I think I was fully drenched. All I did is I took my mobile phone and put it in my bag to ensure that I don't repeat the mistakes what I did in the past. Do you get it there? I learned from a mistake. Now the thing is, day before yesterday, you know, you, you get a kind of a smell when the rain droplets hit the mud. You call it petricho. I had that feeling day before yesterday. I said, it's going to rain. It shouldn't rain. Yesterday, I was happy it rained. But I was sad for the students of education because it was all held in the open, but still, nobody got deterred and the seminar went off there. I mean, if time gets, some of you all can visit to figure out what I'm talking, what is a step well? Or you got to go to Bansilal Pet, or maybe one more year you wait. We'll have two step wells getting back to order here. Okay, it's going to be a picnic spot there. Okay, now let me get to the other thing. Few things that I have to tell out. Now look at the direction of the hypothesis. It is not equal to in the alternate. Do you see that? It is called as a directionless hypothesis. But suppose I use a symbol of greater than or less than, it comes with direction. Do you get it? And if it is the less than symbol pointing, I call it a left tail test. If a greater than symbol, I call it right tail test. It all depends. I don't know, I make a common assumption to all my students and tell them, it all depends on what you want to test. You are taking a health drink and you believe, or you take a tonic and you believe that increases your appetite and over a period, your weight increases. Now, I want a tonic which is the reverse of it, which lowers my appetite, I eat less and I shed weight. Is that tonic actually working on my body or working on someone who is skinny? Do you get this there? I want to figure out that. So I said increase of weight and decrease of weight. Can you check my words? So I said if I use negative connoting words, I use a left tail test. If I use a positive connoting words, I use a right tail test. But if I use a neutral word, then I go for a two-tail test. I mean, I tell it when my friend uh, Naresh takes his vehicle for servicing, I ask him, how is it? And he said, like every six months I get it done, it's not an issue. He said, mileage and uh, pickup, you know, they have gone up very high. Mundu, I says, now, four years He says, mileage has increased. Two or three people in the car, still going at the same pace. But he said, What he's saying is, what was good became worse. He's using a negative connoting word. When he said, pick up and mileage has gone up, he's using a positive connoting word. He said, okay, it was a routine kind of a thing. It is like, you know, I just wanted to see that everything is kept in order. That's it. So it's a two-tailed test. So please bear this in mind. When it's hypothesis testing, why hypothesis? Which tail is it? And how do you take that 5 person, 1 person and coming to it? Next one. more. So what is it? Using hypothesis, we try to interpret, draw conclusions about population using sample data. I said it is a sample which is pitched against the population. And what holds good for my sample? I said holds good for the entire population. Provided I have taken adequate care about my sample. If the sample is wrong, it is not representative, 
it has not got all the qualities of a good sample, everything falls flat. And then you said a hypothesis test evaluates two mutually exclusive statements. And this bit of probability language. You know what is mutually exclusive? You accept one, the other is rejected. You accept the other, the first one gets rejected. If I toss a coin, I get heads. I can't get tails. So I say heads is the answer. If I get tails, there's no heads in it. That's what I mean by the word mutually exclusive. Accepting one rejects the other. So here, we say whenever we make a claim about the distribution of data and other things there, I mean, uh, it, it's to do with things like machine learning, a lot of other things. I mean, that's a later part. Next, month. OK. The general goal of any hypothesis testing is to rule out a chance of a sampling error. And it's a technique with which we determine the specific treatment which has an effect. It could be on an individual. It could be on a group of individuals. Or it could be on the whole population. All right, you know, the vaccination. And because of it, not many you know, people have this thing there. Uh, for TB and other things, if you are given in those countries, the COVID rate was lower. In India, or something. There's still studies are going on. Other countries, it's not a must. You have to take TB injection there. And those countries that have suffered, the fatality rate is quite high there. The death or mortality is quite higher there. There's a lot of research going on on that. Why we give that basic vaccines to kids in India and it is not there abroad. All right, let, let's go a little further. Now, I'm talking about what we know about, you know, you see parameter and you know a statistic, you say mu is for population and x bar is for a sample. Are you getting it there? So we are trying to take a sample and we are trying to work out a testing on that and what holds good for the sample, we say holds good for the entire population. Next slide. Now, these are the steps that are there. First and foremost, it's simple things, you know. Don't get into any complicated things. Don't make it look like a rocket technology there. Simple things. As I said, there is no change in AC after repair. There is change in AC after repair. After the intervention of the plumber, the toilets are working. There is free flow of water. Simple things. Whatever I see around, I can make a hypothesis. Yesterday, the taps were different. Today, it's different. Then I asked Rohit, what happened? Did somebody repair it? Why is it working today? Oh, it is the plumber who has set it right. That's the reason it's working. I can rule out what it is. So I said, simple things that you see around. I made a hunch about her. I mean, I moved out with my vehicle. I seen her in the lawn. I get to the class. She's before me. I said, you skipped your lunch. I'm sure she skipped it. I'm telling about my hunch. Are you getting it, what I'm saying? I said, simple things that I see around. It, I mean, she's saying, no, sir, which means I'm proven wrong. Do you get that? I, I, I stand to be corrected there. Do you get it, what I'm saying? So I said that you have to formulate a null and alternate. You'll have to select an appropriate test. What are that selection is what I'm going to speak on, whether it's parametric and what is non-parametric. You choose a level of significance. Again, I stand with that, telling that the chances of committing a type 1 error is alpha. The chances of committing a type 2 error is beta. What is alpha? Null hypothesis being right and you reject it. What is beta? Null hypothesis being wrong and you accept it. So you collect data, you determine the probability associated, and you say whether it lies within the confidence limit or it goes beyond the confidence limit there. So you think about whether to reject the null or you accept the null. Nowhere you're talking about the alternate in the later part. Do you see that? You only talk about accepting, rejecting the null. All right? I mean, whatever conclusions you draw. If it is for a marketing research, probably this. If it's finance, it is HR, or it could be to do with psychology, sociology, journalism. You have your own things to conclude in the end. Research is domain general. Let me make it very clear. Research is domain general. It's medicine. It is engineering. It's social sciences, life sciences. Everywhere, research is research. Maybe the approaches vary. The tools vary. Arts, the focus is more on qualitative research. Engineering, it's more on quantitative research. Finance, it's more on quantitative. HR, it's more on qualitative. It varies. Let's go to the next one. Now, these are the steps that you have. I won't put much effort on this. Let's move on. Yeah, I just want you to have this imprinted. And the next slide which comes, which is further explanatory. Maybe it helps out the cause of theory. 
But I try telling the truth is the null hypothesis is true or the null hypothesis is false. And the decision is whether I reject the null hypothesis or I accept the or fail to reject. Fail to reject is what? Fail to reject is nothing but accept. It's other way around of putting things there, right? Sounds a little complicated. Fail to reject. Now I said it is type one error when it is true and your decision is to reject it. And uh, here you look at it. This is the other way around. I think you should get one minus alpha there. I mean, it's false and you reject, it's good. You get it? And you call it one minus beta. It's false and you reject it. Right? And, and you look at it, it's true and you fail to reject. You call that as beta there. I mean, that is, what is that? It's true and you accept it. It's a good one. It is one minus alpha. And this is beta, wherein? And false, but you accept it. It's false and you accept it. Can we go to the next slide, Ma? Next one, I think this is the theory part. Next. Did it get saved what I put in? Yeah, next. Oh my god. Uh-huh. Okay, just hold it there. Pull out that pen drive. Okay, I thought I had a better visual way of trying to just open this. Okay, hypothesis, testing, and tools of analysis. Mm 